curious about vegetables, talk to Israel Seed. Hello everyone, welcome to Around the Veg Table. So I'm Lisette Lacambra and your host for this program. Before I kick, I turn the virtual floor to Musa. Uh, I would like to again welcome you and also to thank everyone who's joining us today. Thank you. So in today's episode, uh, we uh, invited two of our colleagues from the data team, Mr. Musa Shehu. Uh, our uh, m and &E and data analyst in Katy, Nigeria. Hello, Musa. May I ask you to turn on your video? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And also our um, m and &E and data analyst in Katy, Uganda, Ms. Uh, Nasitor Gijumba. Nasitor? Are you with us? Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So thank you. Thank you for the two of you. Yeah. So we invited Musa and Nasitor to uh, share their experiences regarding uh, vegetable market price information and on how they use the data to create a market uh, market opportunities to uh, for smallholder farmers. So um, again, thank you, Musa and Nasitor, for yeah, uh, uh, allowing me or allowing uh, us to uh, get the information for you to share and uh, for us also to learn how you do this um, activity in Nigeria and Uganda. Good morning, uh, Africa and afternoon in Asia. Uh, I am Musa Shehu, M&E and Data Analyst, History Seed KT Nigeria. Together with me is... My name once again is Nasita Kijumba from Uganda, M and E data analyst. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Uh, we are going to discuss on vegetable market price information, creating market opportunity for small holder farmers. East West Seed KT, Nigeria, and Uganda, and other countries conduct weekly market survey so as to understand the trends of vegetable prices in all uh, countries where KT is operating. And this activity mainly conducted by technical field officers from the various local markets of their operations uh, based on prices on vegetable crop per basket, kg, feces, and bundle depending on the market. This information is documented in a market information database, which is being cleaned and analyzed by the MIE department. They later share with stakeholders for decision making. You can see from this photo, it's a pill stop trying to collect the information. The objectives of collecting this information is to understand the trend of vegetable prices, that is how the prices is fluctuating within the year, and to monitor the fear of high and low price and try to understand the rhythm behind that. Why is this period the price is high and why this period the price is low? And to inform farmers on the available markets and current prices. This will enable them to have negotiating power with the traders when they have the price at that particular period. So when they are able to produce their products, when traders are coming to buy the, their products, they can have the idea on what is the current price of that crop. And to share this result with the farmers through TFOs or with the general public, that is via media platforms, agro dealers, extension officers that are working together and other project partners. Uh, this information is also used in the decision on best choice of crop to produce, bearing in mind the expected price at harvesting period. If you are uh, you can have an idea of what the price is going to be at the end of my harvest. To formulate solution regarding technical problem through knowledge, uh, after publishing, after looking at the results, uh, we try to understand what are the technical problems that are affecting the farmers. This will assist us to further share knowledge between other countries and also carry out actual research. Then how do we collect this data? One is to identify the main vegetable market and also the market day. You know, mostly here in Africa, some there are some markets that are weekly or some at an interval of some days, while some is daily. So the field officer will identify the market within the area where he visits the market weekly to collect prices from two to three traders. This information is recorded in a FIFA and transferred to Google Sheet. The Google Sheet is designed based on the market name the TFO 
collecting the information, the various crop, the quantity, the unit, which is in kg, basket, or pieces, and minimum and maximum price of that market. You can see from these photos, our field staff from various locations try to interact with the traders and collect the information. How to present this informative data? After collecting the data, m and department try to clean the data, that is to make sure that the unit and the pigos are all correct. Then we took the average of each vegetable crop because we have minimum and maximum price. Then from there, we will take the average. Then we analyze the data based origin, that is if there are a different location where we are collecting the information, and we can also decide to combine the results to make one presentation or one presentation of that data, maybe to present the particular region or the entire country. Then presentation and discussion after making the analysis, like using a simple way the farmers can understand and all our various stakeholders. So we add like using a bar chart, bar graph, picto uh, pictograph, pie chart, and so on. So we try to add some discussion and also we make recommendation with regard to the input with, with regard to the result that we are having. And lastly, we try to print this information so that we can share with our farmers. So here you can see from the photos are some of the farmers visiting our learning site. So we are trying to interact and share the result with them. This is in soft copy. So you can see from this chart uh, is a price information based on tomato. This is from Nigeria from 65 kg for two years, that is 2021 and 2023. You can see from the January up to April in 2021, the price is low compared to 2023, but this is the period where we normally have growth in the market. While from May to June, you can see the price in 2021 too is high, while the, 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 the information is following the trend, but it is a little a bit lower in 2023, the same thing in the August to December. This means that when we started collecting this information in 2021 and we analyzed it at the beginning of 2022, uh, we shared this data to the farmers. So we tried to create an awareness. So that is why if you see in the 2022, this is a mistake, it's not 2023, it's 2021 and 2023. You see, the, 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 some of the farmers have understand that, yes, it is good to, to not produce within this month, that is from January to March. So that is why the price is a bit okay, better than 2021. The same thing when you check from June, from May to July, you see the price is a bit low because based on this information, some farmers have taken decision to make sure that they're able to produce tomato in within this month. And that is why the price drop a little compared to 2021. So this means that the farmer are benefiting or East West KT are trying to create awareness among the farmers. From this graph too, maybe I will invite Nasita to shed more light on that. Over to you, Nasita. Thank you. Thank you so much, Musa. Thank you, Tim, for listening in. Like we talked before, that TFOs collect data. When they collect data, we enter it into our database that we have, then we analyze and we share back this information. This is a presentation of how our weekly reports are of sharing the market information to back to our farmers. Now, since we have, we operate in various regions, now, like in Uganda, we operate in Eastern, Central, West Nile and uh, North region, but you realize we, the first graph has vegetables since not all vegetables are measured in kilograms. So I create the various vegetables now like cabbage and watermelon and pumpkin. Here we, we don't measure it in kilograms. It's either per piece or per head. That is why graph one showcases the prices of cabbage, watermelon and pumpkin in various regions. You realize we have Eastern, Central, and West Nile. And blue, the bar graph in blue is cabbage. You realize that the prices are relatively the same, but West Nile showcases almost the same prices with Central region. So when you get to watermelon, 
In that week, we realized that watermelon was known in the West Nile region markets. That is why West Nile only had cabbages. So what did we learn? We learned that most of our farmers need to plan better. You find a time that some markets don't have products in that week in the market. We inform when we share, even the TFOs will know, okay, in this week, all markets within the West Nile regions, the markets they are reporting on, don't have watermelon. So we shall plan better with our farmers to see that during scarcity, can we plan better so that we 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 can produce more so that there is availability of a vegetable crop. Same applies to the pumpkin. Then you realize still the prices vary in the various regions. Like in Eastern region, you realize the watermelon was way higher than the one in the central region. When we get to graph two, that's these are vegetable crops that are measured in kilograms, onions, eggplants, tomatoes, back in Uganda. So you, you find that this is showcasing the various prices of the crops across regions. Uh, let us say in onions, you realize it is still West Nile that is having higher prices of onions in compared to Eastern and Central. So sometimes when officers report hiked price, you come in to inquire why. Maybe you realize that traders get these crops from way far or where the season is high and they bring to the markets. So they hike the price because this includes the transport costs, everything. So you find that markets are varying in the various regions because either of availability, too much availability or scarcity. Eggplants, but we have regions where we know that maybe there are some cases of high droughts that most of the traders get these crops from the vegetable crops from other districts or other regions, then they bring and avail them in their markets. So that is what the graph here showcases. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nasita. So in this graph too, you can see uh, the trend in market prices for vegetable in Western Nile in the year 2022. You can see how the price of onion like the this one, look at how it is fluctuating. So you can see around May, the price is almost high. And the, the lowest price you can see is around February and also December up to November up to December. So it means if farmers can try to target this period, possibly they may double their profit. And this will ensure that there is constant supply in the market so that our farmers and the, the general people can have access to good quality vegetable food too. Then if you can see this one, eggplant, you can see the price too is low throughout the year compared to other crop. So this information can also help the farmer to make a proper choice of what crop to produce looking at the prices within the year, even though you have to also consider the cost of producing that crop too. Then the same thing for tomato, you can see from the graph, uh, this is tomato. You can see in March, the price is very low. In March, almost the same case in my country, that is Nigeria, because this one is from Uganda. Then the high price is in almost like middle of June, between June, July, almost the same trend in Nigeria too. Uh, then in the October too. So this is how the price, the same thing for carrot and sweet paper, you can see the price is fluctuating within the year. So this is the type of information that we present to the farmers. So uh, as I mentioned, sometimes we print the hard copy. This is some of the hard copy printed. This is based on tomato and it is being translated to local language, which is Hausa in the Northern Nigeria. Uh, this is a, our staff trying to discuss this information or share the result with the farmer so that they can easily understand to make a proper plan on the next crop production. We also share the information through the to, 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 to the farmers via our TFOs, that is during training and field days. Sometimes, you know, we are training agro dealers, so we try to share the information with them. As you know, agro dealers, they have so many farmers that they advise and interact who visit their shop. So getting this information too is like trying to let the general farmers to know as they have thousands of farmers working around them. So this is one of our training with agro dealers. 
we are trying to share the information with them and receive some of the feedback from them to see that how they can easily understand the result and to apply it in their various uh, activities with the farmers. Uh, key farmers inception meeting and farmers field days is also one of the uh, opportunity we use to share this information with farmers and also with the project partners and other stakeholders. We are also using social media through our digital team, using Facebook, WhatsApp, or radio to share this information. You can see from these photos, a various posts being uh, sent to Facebook. You can see there is so much reaction and comments from the audience just to make sure that public have an awareness on how the vegetable prices is fluctuating within the year so that even the consumers can see when the price is expected to be high so that they can ensure they have access to this crop or produce. Sometimes, uh, like this is from this photo, you can see community field facilitators, trainers that we train. We sometimes also make sure that we share the information with them. They also play important role with regard to vegetable production, and they advise other farmers on how to produce. So this information is also uh, can also assist them on proper decision making. And we receive some quite suggestion and feedback while sharing this information. For example, from the digital platform, uh, when we share the information, we receive this is very helpful, informative. This is very uh, informative. This is very important to us. This is some of the comment that we receive. Uh, sometimes when we share the information face to face, some of the question or feedback we receive from the either farmers, how to target the good price. That is how can somebody try to make sure that he produce within this period, uh, period where he will have good market price. So we normally answer them by making sure to know the number of days to maturity of that particular crop, how many days it, it will take from the nursery. Then after transplanting, how many days it will take to your first harvest. Then you can look into that and adjust your production calendar. And sometimes you see, sometimes whenever you see high or low price, there are uh, high or low supply in the market, which can affect the price. Sometimes it's affected by the weather. So whenever you see sometimes the price in the market is high, it means maybe the farmers cannot produce because of certain weather problems. So that is why whenever the farmer see the grab or the presentation, they decide to ask, so how to overcome the weather problems? This is also related to technical department. Sometimes we, they have to give some good suggestion on choice of crop, variety that can withstand that period or proper spraying schedule, spraying schedule. So some of the challenges that we encounter while analyzing or collecting the data is casting or vegetable in some time in some time period. You know, if you are trying to make a graph, if within this month there is no vegetable price, so you cannot have the information with regard to the price. So the, your graph cannot go as normal. Sometimes you may have a missing uh, space, but as well, this is also opportunity for the farmers to come in so that they can start producing within that period. And there is a wide gap between minimum and maximum price. You know, we are taking minimum and maximum price, then we get the average. Sometimes the gap is very wide, so it is very difficult for us to get the average. Then traders do not give actual price unless the technical field officer give a proper explanation on why I am asking you the price. Sometimes they have to uh, give a high price expecting the field officer to negotiate, then they can arrive to the actual price. Then some not allow capturing pictures. Uh, sometimes when field officers are trying to collect the information, the trader may decide to say, please, I don't want to take my photo. So we also try to make the field officer to understand it is not necessary to have the uh, photos of the traders provided you can get the information. Then in conclusion, result from the previous market survey data is very important to our small scale farmers that will ensure success and sustainable vegetable production through identification of new opportunities, proper crop choice and avoid period of market growth. Based on this, we are recommending upgrading from existing market option to more attractive. What do you mean by that? so that we can link our farmers directly to the traders or trader directly to the farmers 
And how we can do that, sometimes we have to come up with the traders database so that in all the location where we are operating, for example, we already have it in Nigeria, but we have to improve in all the location where we are operating. So we can have the names of the various traders and even the crop they are interested in so that we can easily uh, share it with all our field officers and all our stakeholders whenever our farmers are looking for any traders, they can easily lay their hand there and get it. Uh, thank you for listening. That is the end of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Musa and also Nasitur uh, for this very informative um, session. It, uh, it was uh, good to see how you have built uh, this KT activity in your countries uh, to benefit the smallholder farmers. And I'm really curious to know or witness the, the impact this activity brings to, to, to your farmers. And um, it's good also to know how you work together as a team because you also mentioned a while ago, Musa, how you bring this data um, or this information to your technical team in improving their uh, recommendations and also to the digital um, colleagues on how to share it more in the social platform. So really great to uh, hear your uh, presentation, Musa. Thank you very much. So now I would like to uh, invite both of you, Musa and Nasitur, to um, turn on your video and uh, let's answer some of the questions that were already um, yeah, shared in the chat box. So there's a question from Francis. Uh, is there a pre-designed template for the collection of the data? Do you use a pre-designed template? Yes, we already were just using a Google Sheet. Uh, that is how we design it with the various sheets with the field officer names then from the each sheet we have the market name then we have the various vegetable uh like the unit like what is the price what is the quantity either in kg or in pieces what is the maximum and minimum uh price that is so that when the Field officer collected the information. He will all, he will just come. We are using the same sheet for all our countries, so he just come and update the list based on that week. Mm -mm. And that uh, sheet is um, particular for one staff. So one staff has uh, has his own sheet. No, we are using one document. That is one Google sheet. Then in, on, in that sheet, we have different sheets, that is different separate sheets. <laughs> okay. Yes, with, the, with, with their names. Then in each one, we have the description about the unit, the quantity and prices. Mm -mm. So it's very easy for you to later on aggregate and yeah, collect the data as one, yeah. Yes, and, and, and everybody has an access to it. Yeah, thank you very much, Musa. Um, maybe if I will throw this next question to, to Nasitor from Sylvie. Uh, so what are the standard units used to collect vegetable prices in, uh, I'm sorry, it's Nigeria. <laughs> um, so Musa, it's, uh, it's to you. So is it in kilo? Is it in unit? Is it in bunch? So the, uh, does, does it have an impact on the accuracy of the prices collected? Okay, so like for what we did for all our crop, we try to understand the uh, kg of each. Sometimes you see most of the farmers were given in basket, but we have an idea of the different weights of the different basket. But on average, we took it at 65 kg. That is for uh, tomato, for example. While for like cabbage, we also try to estimate the kg some in 100 kg, depending on the size of the bag. This is how we are collecting it. Mostly now we are using a standard unit that is kg. Mm -mm. And do you see an impact on the accuracy of the prices collected? That's the second yes. question. Yes, because what, the moment you even see the graph, because you know the people have an idea on how the trend is within the year, so you, you can easily see it is defecting the real uh like real day-to-day -day data mm -mm. yeah yeah and do you also have that experience nasitor 
that the the unit that you select in Uganda also affects the accuracy accuracy of prices. Okay. What? Thank you, Lisette. What happens in Uganda? Uh, we have some markets that have weighing scales that they weigh in kilograms. Then we have uh, some local markets, real small markets that, let us say like tomatoes, they, they, they gather the vegetables into a bundle, like three tomatoes. So the, TFO, the TFOs estimate that three bundles can make one kg. So if a bundle is at 500, then three bundles, that is 1,500 Ugandan shillings. So that is one kilogram. So we find that since like we said earlier that the TFOs go around two to three traders asking the prices of the same vegetables. If the vegetable prices are the same, then that is the price. But if you say like, the second trader sells a bit higher then maybe we can set a range and we said maybe tomatoes will range from 1000 to 1500 then we have like i earlier said vegetables like pumpkin watermelon and cabbage here in uganda we don't sell in kilos they sell one piece so they they also range we have smaller sizes and bigger sizes so the TFOs will give you the range in prices. Let's say the smallest will cost 500 and the biggest will go for 3,000. So that is how they will share the market price. Okay, thank you very much, Nasitar and Musa, for answering uh, Sylvie's question. Uh, from Sylvie, it's just to mention that in the next version of the KT app, so we will have the features to collect the market prices directly. So we don't need the template um, that uh, Musa mentioned a while ago. So looking forward for the, yeah, for the launch of the new KT app. Uh, from Marla, how often you share this information to farmers or dealers? And what is the most feedback, uh, the, the common feedback from them? I think Musa, would you like to answer this one first? Okay, uh, like for us, the general uh, information, we share it after we collect like one year result, then we make analysis and share. That's like beginning of first quarter of every year. For example, now uh, at the beginning of around March, we shared 2022 results. <clears throat> but after collecting the information by the field officer, that is the technical field officers, uh, our digital department, they collect this information and post it in our Facebook, but just the price per each crop and the units. Uh, this is how we share it. Uh, that is per year, but whenever we have any activity with agro dealers, uh, with the farmers, especially in the learning site or during agro dealers visit. So we try to bring this type of information with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And uh, what are the, I think you mentioned three of the um, common feedback when you share information. Nasitar, do you have other uh, feedback coming from the farmers or other stakeholders that, uh, where you share the information? Um, I think like what Musa had presented, it's really very helpful because it helps the farmer. Like he, the way TFOs sell the product to our farmer and say, baby, let us grow pumpkins. Eh? Of course, the one first thing the farmer will ask, do is there a market? So if you inform the farmer about the prices, actually, it is very good that we even do this market information weekly because we we get we give feedback to the farmers. We have we have demos that maybe let us say that is the season when the farmer field day is yet to happen. It can help us also tell, by the way, as you're planning the farmer field day, right now the market price of your product is at, stands at this and this. So it is really very helpful. That is the feedback we, we normally get about the prices we give them. And uh, we go to Ong Lope, a question. Um, 
for Nigeria, Musa, this is question for you. Currently, are the farmers in Nigeria using the market price fluctuation data in their farming production, especially in price focusing? If so, how many adoption rate? I think you, you already mentioned um, the how you use it, but uh, this is very good uh, question on how is the adoption. Okay, <clears throat> actually, Lisette, uh, based on our market information, and because uh, we try to uh, let all our field officers to know this is how the trend is. And uh, you know now farmers in area where KT is operating are looking at our field officers as their consultant. So anytime they want to start to produce some vegetables, sometimes they come and ask the field officers, please, I want to produce this crop in this time. So when the field officer see that it's not a good time to have a good price, he will advise the farmer, please not to. And that is why you see before in from January to March, there is market growth in Nigeria because every farmer is willing to produce within that period. But because of our activity, we try to educate the farmers, please, if you want to make a price, try to avoid this period because all, 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 almost all of the farmers are not making any profit. So uh, they're even losing their even main cost of investment. So we try to advise them, you, you should avoid this period. Maybe if you can focus on this period within the year, so you can make much better price at your harvest. But we are not measuring actually the level of adoption. So maybe something to consider in our next, uh, maybe quick impact study. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Musa. Yes, thank you very much for that. Um, for, uh, I think uh, we are still have two questions. Uh, yeah, we still have eight minutes. I think we have one more question because it's time is ticking. Um, from Ayla from the Philippines. So great presentation, Musa and Asitor. Um, thank you for sharing this insight. So just a clarification though about the market data and analysis. Are you referring to the prices declared for the consumers or the farm gate prices or acquisition prices from the farmers? I think I will uh, let Musa answer this one. Thank you. Uh, this price is determined by the market forces. Uh, it is not constant, it is not static. Maybe it can even change from today to tomorrow. Uh, so it is based on the market prices that you, we collect the data and get it, get to get the average and make our analysis. But it, is it the price where the consumer um, buys the product or is it the price that the farmer, uh, the, the dealer or the trader gets it from the farmer? Yeah, you, you see in the market, most of what you can see, uh, it is the price from the farmers to the traders that can take it to the various villages or location or communities where they can sell direct to the consumers. Okay, so this is the farm. So it's basically the farm farm gate price, yeah, yeah. Nasitor, do you have an addition point? There? Yes, actually, uh, the prices I share are not for market prices. They are market. They are traders. That like that is the price a trader is selling to the consumer. So if if it is the buyer. If it is the farmer who wants to sell, then there is a farmer gate price for their products. But let us say we have farmers that would want to reach out to the trader. They will negotiate on the prices. But the information I give is a market price information. The info we get from the markets, the traders. Thank you, Nasitor and uh, Musa, for that uh, clarifications. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. So thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you again, Musa and Nasitor. Um, this is really a great sharing experience and uh, looking forward to seeing more progress in the future on how you collect the price information. Well, uh, we, we insert the KT up already <laughs> that will help it improve and uh, the sharing to the stakeholders and also especially on making it more impactful uh, on a larger scale uh, to your farmers. So I hope this sharing inspires other countries and would 
I would re uh, refer to experience uh, or lessons in Nigeria and Uganda. And uh, if you want to know more, uh, don't hesitate to contact Musa and Nasitar or other uh, team members or colleagues in Nigeria and Uganda. So that's the end of our episode. Do you have any questions you would like to be answered in the future episode or topics that you would like to learn more about? Leave your questions or suggestions in the comment section or contact our technical support hub members in your country so stay tuned for the next episode of around the veg table curious about vegetables talk to Iswesi thank you everyone thank you bye bye thank you bye